Hey everyone, my name is Benj Heisch, and as many of you know, I'm a big fan of film photography, and today we are gonna check out the Negative Supply, the Basic 35. I also got the kit that has the Basic 120. So this is the whole kit right here, uh, at least for 35, which I'll be scanning right now. So this is their 99 CRI light box thing. It's the four x five. And then this is the basic carrier 35. So it doesn't have the little twist knob and stuff. And then I have it on the guides to allow the full border. So I see the sprockets and I can see what film stock it was, stuff like that. And then here's obviously the tower. This thing is adjustable. Now one of the upgrades that I'm making already is I have uh, a tiny little kind of Arca Swiss compatible quick release plate that I bought on Amazon and it's gonna be here tomorrow so that I can just take my cameras on and off here really, really easily. And then this is my Fujifilm X-E4 and it's not actually a very heavy camera even with this uh, adapted Nikkor lens, but the thing that I'm already running into is it's shifting back and forth slightly um, and so I'm having a hard time getting a really, really tight seal on this. Um, so that's kind of been one of my issues. Uh, and then I think I'm gonna probably buy just like a little level, like uh, bubble level thing to put on the hot shoe just so I have, know that everything is, is flat and just kind of working together really well. And as I mentioned, this is a Nikkor 55 3.5 uh, that was my dad's from the 70s. It's the only macro lens I've ever owned, actually. And for something like this, uh, I'm hoping that it's going to do well. It's done well so far. I'm scanning everything at f8 at 1 8th of a second shutter speed at ISO 640. Um, the base ISO of the Fujifilm cameras is a little bit higher to kind of maximize dynamic range and everything like that. And so one eighth of a second is a good enough shutter speed for me, at least at this point. But as someone who's, you know, kind of doing a first impressions, if you all have suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below because again, I am very, very new to scanning in particular. And one of the things that's been most disappointing so far in using the Fujifilm instead of uh, like my Canon R6 or something, the Canon R6 is only 20 megapixels, so I didn't want to use that. And then this is just so small and I use it for my overhead cam already. And then I use it with this grip, so it already has an Arca Swiss, which will be really easy to take on and off. And then I bought this Earth URTH adapter for it uh, on Amazon for, I don't know, $12 or something. But the most annoying thing, and I love Fujifilm cameras, like I get it, but they charge you $30 for their tethering software to attach it to Lightroom? Like, come on, that's weak sauce. Um, and then I don't have an actual remote for this, so what I've been doing is pairing it with my iPad to just click it so I don't have to click the button every time and worry about a self-timer. But then that same network that connects my iPad with this doesn't allow the PC auto save to go to the computer. So then I still have to take this and put it onto the computer. It would just be so much nicer. And I don't want, I guess maybe I'll just spend the $30 and, and buy the tethering software. Um, but it's just an annoyance. Like why should that, why should I have to pay for that? If you follow me on Twitter, uh, I'll probably end up posting some of these photos to there or maybe uh, my personal kind of uh, film more related Instagram accounts as well. So you can check those out if you wanna kind of see some of these samples as well. So let's jump in, uh, check out this roll of 35 and kind of see what we're looking at. All right, here we go. We are gonna jump in here, do these frames, starting with kind of frame one. This is how I'm exposing. Let me know uh, if you guys are thinking I'm a, a big dummy for doing it this way. So I have the iPad here with the remote trigger and then we'll transfer over to Lightroom and check it out. And here we go into Lightroom. So from what I know, there's a few ways you can definitely do this. First of all, you can simply just invert the tone curve over here and that gets you somewhere. And then you can kind of click over something like this or something like this and try to start moving in that direction. 
And then a thing to note, obviously, is that since you inverted the tone curve, all of these settings over here are opposite. So to get more exposure, you're going this way. To get less exposure, you're going the other way. So, you know, there's definitely ways to do it this way by, you know, messing with all of these and whatnot. So that's what I did at first, but I never really got a good result. You can definitely start moving around with the tone curve and, and messing with that kind of stuff. So it's definitely a way to do it. And then you can, you know, maybe go to something like this and just invert and like, that looks pretty good. You know, maybe we need to kind of bump up exposure a little bit and, and things like that. So there's definitely a way that you can do it. The thing is though, I found that I was messing with settings way too much. And so what I did was just kind of sucked it up and downloaded the Negative Lab Pro plugin. So all you do is hit, you basically make sure that you have your framing and stuff in here with some of the border. Then you click Control N, that brings up Negative Lab Pro, convert your negative. And then you can start messing with all of these settings and they're a little bit more intuitive in here. And you can also go in and kind of reset your white balance point if you didn't do it correctly this way. But we're kind of moving in a direction that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, I'd also probably try to start this out with a maybe uh, <laughs> frame that has a little bit better exposure as this was just kind of like a dump frame at the beginning of the roll. So you can kind of just hit apply and then honestly looks pretty good. Um, maybe let's try one of these ones kind of towards the center. So again, the first thing I'm doing is grabbing this, using the white balance to kind of change this part. Control N, convert negative, and you can do this with all of them for sure. You know, you can batch edit an entire roll at once if you'd like. But I mean, that's looking pretty, pretty good right off the bat. Um, I could definitely mess with this a little bit, but I, I mean, overall, I think tonality and everything already looks great. Um, the only thing that kind of happens here is white balance. They kind of do an auto setting. And so I would probably rather, I mean, it, it's definitely better for sure. Um, you know, the neutral auto setting. Um, I'm wondering though, is if that kind of goes across all of these and then messes that stuff up. But, you know, overall, I mean, I think this Negative Lab Pro does a really, really great job of saving me a lot of time in tweaking these. Uh, like I said, I could definitely kind of go in here and grab some of these and reverse the tone curve and mess with things like this and start to get into the right direction. But, you know, it just, it's a completely different ball game um, doing it like this. And then you have to mess with all this stuff and try to start getting your white points right and your black points right. And it just ends up being uh, a lot smarter for me so far to just jump in and use Negative Lab Pro. So we're right there with this. And if we just reset all of this, set it right here, click this, open up Negative Lab Pro, invert negatives. Yeah, it does some work, but yeah, I mean, that looks pretty darn good. I would just probably increase the black point a little bit. Maybe dump exposure down slightly, but I mean, that conversion just took absolutely no time at all um, and made this whole process quite a bit easier. Okay, so let me know what you think. Uh, I find that this is a very satisfying and sort of relaxing and fun experience. Uh, I felt like getting to that point, which obviously looks more contrasty on the screen, um, was much easier than I had anticipated. There's a few things that I'm kind of running into and curious about with the, the scanning process and using this in terms of their slight discoloration and I'm having some sharpness issues, which I mean, I'm using a 40, 50 year old lens, so could be the issue. Um, but let me know what you think. Let me know if uh, these videos are interesting. And 
If I should do a review of the whole system in general, once I've used it for a few weeks, I'll probably do that and include the 120 as that's obviously the new thing. So if you're interested in this, uh, I'll definitely put a link to their site as well as uh, an affiliate link. I believe Moment is selling these and I have an affiliate set up through them. So uh, if you want to support the channel a bit as well as um, you know some good people that make good things and whatnot, you can definitely check all that out in the description down below. If you found this helpful or interesting or anything like that, uh, give me a thumbs up. That would definitely help the channel. Uh, subscribe if you aren't already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks again, and I will see you on the next one.